if they hurry. Schneider with Scheidel to his left. Scheidel to the goal. Got the feed. He shoots and he scores. So let's talk about the theme that was set up for this. So here's the look that was approved. The look is basically an energetic look, kind of grungy and painty look that is going to be emanating out of our hockey players. So we decided like once we looked at the style, the, the Sapphire plugins were going to be the really good way for us to portray this and a way to combine their powerful use in After Effects. So let's move on to see how we're going to set up this project. The beginning is we're going to set up the background. So first we have, we begin with our, with basically our plate, our video plate. Here you have uh, the video that the K-Wings provided for us. It's clean, no effects on it. You know, these were basically our base plate of everything. But first thing we want to do is kind of grunge it up, go back to the theme that we we're looking at. You know, we want to get all the scratches and all that noise in it. So to begin with that, I'm going to add a brand new solid. I'm going to call that film damage because that's what we're doing. And of course, going to load a sapphire film damage and add it to our layer. One thing we really like about the Boris effects and Sapphire effects is just how many settings they have. We can really dial in the look that we're really looking for specifically and really just uh, it's almost like all the settings we need. So you can see right now this is what's happening with the film damage. We really want to just like, increase that noise. And the settings that really end up working out for us is we turned off our stain density, our dust density. I want to increase our scratches quite a bit from 5 to 114. So from here, you can see how many more scratches we're having. And it's just a, you know, a lot better for the look we're looking for. And of course, you do want to see your footage below. So we're going to turn the mode into add. And we have it here. We have it that scratches into footage. Step one, success. From then, let's going to set up. Uh, we're going to add some more layers that we set up in, during our theme. And we do that uh, in, our, in our next step. And right here in setting up the background. So here I'm going to unhide some layers. So what I'm adding is a background color is an add. So it's kind of a bloom. It gives you a little just kind of blooming the whole footage. I've got that uh, grunge texture that I had on before right on top. We're putting a little dark band on it that makes it just uh, so it's not all even everywhere. And then a vignette. One thing we're also kind of doing on this texture, if you see right here, we're adding a motion tile. From here, are the, the the keyframe, so it kind of actually moves. Right now, I have turned off, but I want to see. I want it to move when the camera moves throughout the throughout the scene, because right now at the moment it just stays stays right still, and it just kind of like it's like a, you were lazy about it and didn't really care to composite it correctly. So once we have like a motion tile, it travels much better with the footage. I have a quick uh, pre render that I have right here to show you. Uh, much uh, more real time how that texture actually moves with our composition. All right, so now that we have that base look, we're going to move on to how we're going to set up our effects. So to do that, we need to rotoscope all of our players and the puck and everything out. And luckily, with the magic of television, here we go, voila, we're done. Of course, if not, it's never that easy to do it. It takes, you know, this process takes uh, can be time intensive. But one good news is our project is uh, is kind of really grungy apparently, so we don't need to have a super tight rotoscope. We can have a little bit, just a little bit edging on it. And you can see if I turn off this, you can see it's, it's not totally perfect. They still have a little bit of a um, little bit of mess with it, which is fine because uh, that actually kind of adds to the the stress that we need to add to this. All right, so now that we have our roto done, we're gonna actually move on to adding our effects, which we chose to do in the sapphire builder and let's move on to that step so you, we, we got right here we got our background our roto uh, we're going to use the sapphire builder to that we use an s effect and that's the builder and it goes right there um, as you can see that there's nothing um, there's nothing going on obviously at, at the moment because there's no effects so in order to do that, you need to, uh, you know, edit the effect and get it going. But I'm going to load a preset so you can see what we already did. So right here, we're going to open our preset browser. I'm going to go to Builder Effects. From there, I'm going to go to my K-Wing Effects. I scroll down. And there we go. 
Now here's our main effect that we started going right now. I also have right now uh, a man on it, so you can see right here. That's how it looks like if we just put it right on top, and also as uh, if it's normal. But I'll go back back to tell you what we do from there. But first, let's look at this effect. Let's go to Add Effect, so you can see how everything is built out. It's going to bring up the builder, and here we go. So this is how the whole uh, whole build is put together. These are our brush texture that we decide to make and then we kind of have the different layers putting it together um, also if you click this button on right here it's called previous selected node a lot of times it doesn't have it turned on if you turn it off it's all gonna have just the result so if you turn this back on you can actually see what each node is actually doing uh, based on the look that we decided we thought that uh, S brush would be the best effect for us in S brush you can do a lot of different styles you can do a uh, mash style felt tip, splat, there's quite a bit of different uh, effects you can do with this. We felt Master Style was the best um, for us and that's pr for the first three effects we used that and then uh, we had another edge brush here but just a little bit different with a sponge. But let me first uh, erase all this so you can really see how we've built it together. First I'm going to bring up a brush. That's our first brush. I'm just going to name it Texture 1. I like to name my stuff. If not, things are going to get uh, really junky at the end if you don't find them. Again, we're using the brush oil, mash the style. This is the first look that comes up. It is not like the perfect look that we wanted, but I think a really good base to start with. So then I'm just going to get some numbers that what we found really work for us. Okay, so that's our first one we have. We can also keep adding more brushes. So another thing you can do is just Control Shift D and actually duplicate the brush. Control Shift D. So we need four. So we can let's build another four. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here. So next we're gonna build. We're gonna do the next one, the next texture. Here instead of me plugging all these numbers again, I'm gonna actually load my preset. I like to say every time I make a, a setting, so I like to save my preset in case I need to use it again, or if I actually mess up my settings by some reason, I, I need to go back and fix them up, fix them. So then I'm going to get my hockey player texture two, load it right there. This one is, if the difference was a little bit uh, from here, it's a uh, more grungy, more like messed up and a little bit bigger um, than this one. I'm going to add texture three, load my preset, go hockey player texture three. One of the big reason, main differences here is I'm actually cropping it to our rotoscope, which is by here by crop source to alpha. If you take this off, you see there's, like, there's an outline, but I'm taking, taking the outline right off. I'm making it just uh, crop, obviously right like what it says right there, a crop to source alpha. Next, I'm adding it to my fourth texture, which one, this one's a lot different texture. This one is actually uh, much bigger, uh, is the red texture you saw earlier. I'm loading it right here. Um, it's gonna be right there. One of the things you see is going to be a sponge color right there. We also want a red color. And one thing we do there is by your source color, that's where the color you're getting from. So if, you get, if the colors come from the source, basically your footage, we want, it this, we want it bright red. You can also, of course, you could have done a different color right, for the look that we're choosing. It's a pure red here. All right, next, let's uh, combine all these dif different um, textures, which you have, you know, texture one, texture two. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a layer node right here at the layer node. All right. So we're texture one to texture two. So if you look close, it tells you right here. So texture one foreground, texture two background. All right. And we want to see a little bit more of texture two. So we're going to turn down the opacity of the foreground to 0.3. And you can see a little bit, we see that more we're gonna add another one no this one i was gonna make it an overlay from here we're gonna put it right here and actually what i want to do here is i'm gonna add this input to the background and texture three you can see right here where it is texture three to the foreground this is that's the latest look we have at this moment and to get the last texture 
I'm actually going to do a composite node. And I'm going to add our texture 4 to the front and our layer 2 to the back. Also, of course, I like to name them. So, so like I'm going to put like a couple overlay node and as you can see, of course, you need to attach it to the result. So then you would have, you see right here, as we had it earlier, there it is. So we're gonna say, okay, to apply it to our layer. And once you have that, obviously it doesn't look the sharpest or uh, as we had it before. And the reason is I need to, need to just uh, composite it a little bit better to the background. I'm using that with a pin light. Just kind of sort of blends a little better. Also, it's a little brighter the reds that we like. And also, I'm using the I'm duplicating the rotoscope above it without any effect. I'm using that as an alpha inverted, so I can see the hockey player. So I got all the noise around it, but now I have you know at least I still see his hockey player for all the future effects that I'm going to be adding on top. So this is our base effect with our builder. I also want to add a glow to my layer right here. So uh, go out here and just go get a glow. I should like to use the sapphire glow so most of my projects but in this one the out of the box glow works really well um i add it to, i add uh it starts with a glow radius of 10 but i crank it up to 100 and it gives you a little bit this much look right here of red all around it which is something that that i really liked and it's gonna help us in some of our blending in the future layers and that's kind of a really good base look that i want to have before i start adding more detail into this effect so it layers up real nice. So let's move on to our next phase, which we have right here. And you can see we have a bunch of other layers I'm putting on top. We're adding, a, it's called, I'm calling it the Roto Chunk. It's another, of course, another Rotoscope copy. But here I'm adding another uh, Sapphire build, which of course, let's go to as effects. I'm gonna add it right there. Obviously you can also save presets of Sapphire Builder. So I'm gonna load it right here. And because the preset browser is gonna start opening up. Then I just go over right here in this tab, Builder Effects. You can just go to Builder Effects and then type KW for K Wings. And it comes right here. Uh, K Wings wrote a chunk. And you can see it right there, that's what it's looking for. It's looking kind of like a distressed look right here that's gonna be going all around it. It's a real chunkiness about it. Um, you can show you how some of the difference of what makes this kind of like more chucking than the other one. I just go to edit effects, uh, as effects starting in the effect builder right here, and it's gonna have primarily the same three textures as before, but this one the difference is we're gonna have a, the red version is gonna have really kind of more linear linear chunky edges, and then we're also gonna add another brush. This one's gonna be an auto paint brush with a Van Gogh to get this kind of kind of lines crushed lines gonna just give it more dice distress i'm also gonna add a halo that i also build in the builder so these are again all these effects are really helpful to save them if you ever need to use them Re again repeat them it is a time saving beyond belief we're gonna add some black lines these are all like as uh just settings that we built. Um, it is also very time efficient that we have our presets saved right here in case you need to use them again. I'm loading this black lines. Next, we want to add this little white lines that go around the player, and we're using that with plexus right here. What is really nice, since we built a mask around the player, we can actually build these plexus lines that go around him. And the way we do that is by using two path objects. At a plexus beam render, the, you want to set the plexus beam render to base your lines. If not, it's going to be straight lines. You see the lines going to just uh, get real like jaggedy straight on you. You actually want to have this uh, base your lines, and you reason you want to have two different path objects because you want to basically use two paths. So the lines are going from one path to the other, and that is also made in the groups right here. And you make all, one of your plexus path objects into group, obviously different groups. And again, another a different group right there. And that's how you would do it. And then we also made the difference to the thickness. Usually the thickness is going to be at one, 
actually or maybe two sometimes I think the default so that's a little too thick for us we made that into 0.5 for these lines and there you have it and it's using the mask that we built for the rotoscope so let's continue adding just all these layers we have our second halo Again, I don't want to bore you by doing all these different settings. I'm just trying to do this nice and effective for this presentation. Halo 2. A base photo. This one is actually just a regular, there's no effect. It's just a photo. The only thing I'm doing here is to make it look like it's a big halo going around it. What I did is we feathered the mask. You see right here is feathered mask, 10 and negative 11.5 on the max expansion. So if I get this all the zero, you can see there's the, there's a roto itself. But with the feather, now it gives you the appearance that there's a halo around around him, which is kind of cool. We're also gonna turn on the saturation of the player. You can see right here, we turn on saturation all the way down with a hue and saturation plugin. And then we're gonna do a little bit of fake glow with the S brush. This is not effect one, so this is gonna run, we're gonna load the S brush here right to that guy again load our preset as we had before and there we go so that's the look that we uh, finalized and we were really happy as this base look for our hockey players I have a quick pre-render I want to show you how it looks and here it is alright so all we need to do now is add it to our remaining rotoscope layers and if we look here you can see we have a rotoscope here, rotoscope here, roto, and we're adding the same look to all the remaining, all the remaining layers. If we give you a quick example, I have a pre-render right here of what that looks like. Let me play that for you. So one thing we do want to add here is a little bit of like a, a little kind of cool example right here when he hits the when he hits the glasses you know something that's kind of really cool we had an idea of doing something that was almost like a japanese uh sunburst that is like really fun kind of like you see an anime or whatever and so the way we're doing that is we're going to add a flare with Saf sapphire flare which i think uh that's one thing sapphire is really really well known for it's all their their flares and actually in their brand new release they have uh uh, optimized editor and you know, all brand new presets are really really excellent so you know recommend you if you haven't seen it definitely check it out because it's worth your time um, so in, in layer right here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, adjustment layer from here I'm gonna move that right there call that flare All right, now that I have my adjustment layer set right there, what I wanna you do, uh, add my lens flare, sapphire lens flare. And obviously right there, it's, it's, you can't see it that well. Let me turn this off and you can see that's the flare right there added. Um, we actually made our own preset, of course, but I'm gonna show you the, and if you go to edit lens, here's the, the flare designer right here. And you can actually, Check out all different kind of uh, featured flares that they have. You can turn, you can show your background how it's gonna affect it. You can just turn it off, before you can see the different uh, different styles that they have. What we want to do is actually what we're doing here is we're just gonna load the one we created. So here's a preset browser, and of course we can just make it faster. Our K, K wings lens flare. Let's load it right there. Pretty cool. Let me show you exactly the one we made. So I'm gonna hide this layer. Turn off this flare on. And it's right here. That's the location for it. We're also uh, gonna animate it turning on and off, as you can see, using the lens flare brightness, which we animated from here to here to turn on and off. To show you a quick example, once again. Let me show you um, what this looks like. Oh, it's like a lot more fun, you know. So now when it's when he's oh, excited, it's all pretty cool. All right, so let's you know the one thing we want to do from here is just kind of do some really finishing touches. I think work really well in most projects that I'd like to do at the end. 
So once we have a flare here, one thing I did want to do is increase the saturation a little bit. So what I do is I'm, I'm going to make new adjustment layer. Again, I want to name all my all my work. So you know, saturation. I'm going to load a Q and saturation node here. And what I'm going to try to I'm going to push the push the colors a little bit. I'm going to add it just 25 here. So I can see it's my colors, like my my reds, my blues are a tiny bit better. You can see I'm going to turn on and off. You can see a little bit of highlight, and I just wanted to just increase that a tad. And I'm also, one thing I also really like to use, another effect from Sapphire, which is called Warp Chroma. I think it really helps finish a project when you end up blending these colors together. It kind of separates the um, red, blues, um, let me show you right here but when it's standing like it separates the red green and blue so you can see right there it's like you know but obviously that's not <laughs> the, the client wouldn't be very happy if I delivered this so of course one thing I do want to do is start with like uh, the presets which are of course very powerful and do the subtle wrap and as you see it right here it's still kind of too strong what I like to do so of course what I usually like to tweak is a little bit the C distance right here so what I'm going for mine one the one I like was 0.99 and then I think it looks really nice right there. And if I zoom in a little bit and kind of see, show you, can you see how it's kind of like looks a little bit? Is it like that almost like mistakes that t the TV makes? It's kind of like the purposeful mistake we want to do. If you want to turn this on, you can see like it's a little more clean. If you actually turn this on, and it's, it it just makes you like a little extra more realistic, and just adds a little extra when you for when it's motion and if for the TV viewer or even web viewer, whoever is actually wherever you're putting your product. Again, let's look at this product project one last time to see all the stuff that we put together. All right, very cool. All those uh, you didn't realize so so many effects were going to this. Again, I'm Alejandro Brubaker, co-founder of Sugar Skull Creative. It was a pleasure sharing this project with you today. Until next time.